There was a time, my friends, when the whole world knew these world champions. And there was only one at a time, maximum, because there is only one world, and hence, only one world champion. But now, the woods are full of world champions. Now, here is the current champ with the most seniority. He is known as the Atlantic City Express. And if you know his real name, you too are a champion of trivia. In fact, he answers to the name of Bruce S-E-L-D-O-N. There are many champions. Who are those guys? Well, actually, you probably do know the latest of the world champions. That is Iron Mike Tyson, the new WBC champ. That is the title that means so much that Riddick Bowe once tossed it into a London rubbish bin. But then the WBA crown means so much that once the Atlantic City Express, uh, Bruce Selden, was forced to defend it on, ta-da, an undercard. And Riddick Bowe is now the New York State World Champion, a world title he won in Nevada. The IBF title is vacant now because Franz Botha, the South African who held it last, was on steroids. And we certainly can't have anything like that in boxing. So the next IBF champion will either be Michael Morer or Axel Schultz. You have to move. You have to move. Move. Come on. Who are those guys? But class, that's not all. There is also the WBF champion, Adelson Rodriguez, and the ABA champion, Henry Cisneros, and George Foreman, who is considered the linear champion because he is the last guy standing, which means that he beat the man who beat the man who beat the man who beat John L. Sullivan, whose claim was that he could beat any son of a bitch in the house. Who are those guys? Unfortunately, Big George is now primarily the world champion of commercials. I guarantee it. Well, actually, I did tell a little fib about one guy, just to see if you were listening. Let's go to the videotape. But that's not all, class. There is also the WBF champion, Adelson Rodriguez, and the ABA champion, Henry Cisneros. And in fact, the ABA is the American Bar Association. And though Henry Cisneros sounds like a heavyweight champion, he is actually in the cabinet as the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. But be honest, did you know? Did you even care? The problem is, as Eddie Futch, the knowledgeable old trainer, says, this definitely is not the golden age of heavyweights. Mr. Futch is being polite. This does not even appear to be the polyester age of heavyweights. A boxing, as we know, is a brutal sport that traditionally draws from the lower classes. The poor third world countries that produce most boxers nowadays do not, however, produce big people. And in the United States, the best big athletes go into more respectable sports. Ken Norton was a boxer. Ken Norton Jr. is a linebacker. Hence, we are left with mostly champions du jour, the worst of athletic inflation. Who are those guys? This guy is Jorge Luis Gonzalez. He's never held a professional heavyweight world title, but just to continue the theme, he's won eight separate amateur world championships. And the record for Gonzalez as he comes in, 24 wins, the loss to Evander, or excuse me, to Riddick Bowe last June in a one-sided bout in Bowe's favor. 23 KOs, and a lot of people thought, George, that Gonzalez was going to give Riddick Bowe a lot of trouble because of his size and his long jab, but he showed a marked inability in that fight to defend himself. That's right. He had a habit of carrying that uh, left hand just below the waist, sitting up for Riddick Bowe's overhand right, and he threw them all night. And that overhand right, as you saw, led ultimately to the knockout of Gonzalez. And now here's the man who's facing Jorge Luis Gonzalez here, Tim Witherspoon. Back in the 1980s, he won both the WBA and the WBC World Heavyweight Championships. 
his record 44 wins only four losses 29 KOs he may be performing better technically now than at any other stage in his career Witherspoon coming off that big win over Al Cole He'll, here in January. Unanimous decision over the cruiserweight champion coming up in weight, which demonstrated that Witherspoon is ready perhaps for bigger things if he can sustain it from fight to fight to fight. Tail of the tape now with 38-year-old Tim Witherspoon against 31-year-old Jorge Luis Gonzalez. You can see that Gonzalez has a four-inch height advantage, weighs 26 pounds more than Witherspoon and a five-and-a-half-inch advantage in reach. Larry? Typical of the flaky Gonzalez. After losing to Bo, he comes in at least 15 pounds heavier than he did in that fight. I don't know, what can you expect from a guy who wears a goatee on the back of his head? Punch that numbers, Larry. Take a look at how active they were in their most recent bigger fights, and you can see Gonzalez had a lot of problem with Bo being on the defensive most of the time. Gonzalez has a big jab when he uses it. Witherspoon is expert in making a man miss the jab. And rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Tim Witherspoon, Jorge Luis Gonzalez fight is scheduled for 10 rounds. The standing eight count is in effect. The three knockdown rule is in effect. The referee or the doctor can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 10th and final round. Jim. All right, thank you, Harold. Let's go up to Michael Buffer to pick up the pre-fight introductions. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Madison Square Garden right here in the middle of the Big Apple, New York City, where tonight, main events in association with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Present a triple rumble in the heavyweight division. This first bout is presented in association with Dennis Rappaport Promotions. All the bouts are sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission chairman, former two-time heavyweight champion of the world, Floyd Patterson. Commissioners Rose Trentman and Melvin Southard. Executive directors Tony Russo and James Paltonello. Deputy Commissioner Bob Duffy. Chief physician at ringside, Dr. Billy Lathan. Ringside physicians, Dr. Rufus Sadler. Dr. Dan Hamner and Dr. Richard Ostrico. The timekeeper for all the bouts is Jim Borzet. The three judges scoring this bout for the 10-point must system will be Melvina Lathan, Luis Rivera, and Eva Shane. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Joe Santarpia. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the first of three times tonight from Madison Square Garden, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Ten rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing green trimmed with gold and weighing in at 250 pounds, he brings a professional record of 24 victories, 23 by KO, with only one defeat, a native of Cuba, but now living and fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, ladies and gentlemen, Jorge Luis Gonzalez. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with black, weighing in at 224 pounds. An outstanding record of 44 victories against four defeats, 29 KOs. He comes to us from the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the former two-time heavyweight champion of the world, terrible Tim Witherspoon. Well, it's just two guys out here. Come on, everybody else, please. Gentlemen, you both know the rules. I want a good, clean fight. Are there any questions? No. Okay, shake hands now, and God bless you both. Good luck. 
Jim, when I came to New York, I thought that Gonzalez had the best chance to pull an upset in these fights tonight, in part because Tim Witherspoon has a history of not being able to deal very well with prosperity. But after watching Gonzalez and seeing what his weight is, I, I am less convinced that this fight has the best chance for an upset. Let's see. You know, last year when he fought Bo, he had no trainer of record, Larry. Since then, he's hired a former kickboxing trainer whose name is Nick Blumgren. And with all due respect to Blumgren and his kickboxing background, some people think Jorge Luis might have been better off with no trainer. He's an example so far in his career of someone who stayed as an amateur for much too long. Witherspoon is likely to unleash an unorthodox barrage of punches here to get inside and stay inside of Gonzalez's lengthy jab. Free that hand, free that hand. Witherspoon with a snapping overhand right. <laughs> Gonzalez is always smiling in there, George. Maybe he knows something we don't. I think he's, he brings something to the heavyweight division that we really need. He has a little color, charisma, and I like it. Smile, have some fun, at least Keep act as me. though you are. Now, Tim Witherspoon is not doing what Rick Bow did. Rick Bow didn't give this guy any room to breathe or throw his left jab. He stayed on him every moment. Witherspoon's this, too far outside right now. He's too far away. All you can do is give this fella some confidence. And with that long left jab, if he gets some confidence, it, it can be a hard night for Tim Witherspoon. Maybe Witherspoon forgot that he promised us he would be inside of that jab all night long. Right now, he's standing out there in Gonzalez's most effective punching range. Gonzalez is most uncomfortable when his back is on those ropes. Tim Witherspoon hasn't made him touch those Jimmy, ropes up, yet. Jimmy. Also hasn't been able to get to the body yet, except with... Blows that referee Joe Santarpia saw as low, and you saw Santarpia warning Witherspoon to keep him up. If Witherspoon allows Gonzalez to develop a rhythm with that jab, he's going to set himself up for a tough task. Not only so, Gonzalez had a long career of amateur boxing matches where you stand there and you pow, you jab, you throw them back, and Witherspoon has given him that kind of career participation again. Gonzalez trying to land uppercuts. Witherspoon landed a right hand. Both guys cut loose a little bit right, right. with a half minute to go in round one. And I would think that would be a disadvantage for Gonzalez. He shouldn't throw away at over 235 pounds throw away his energies like that. A lot of action so far between two good sized heavyweights. Total of 474 pounds in there. Off of yesterday's weigh-in, maybe they both weigh just a little bit more tonight. And that was a much better than expected first round for the Cuban defector, Jorge Luis Gonzalez. And as we go to Gonzalez's corner, we listen via the ears of our translator, Hector Garcia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you. Ricky. Put this on that eye. The bottom of that eye. Hey. I'm going for another one. Yeah? I'm going for a ball. The ball. Hey, loosen his, loosen his, his, his fucking ball. Loosen his ball, you know? The ball, ball. The belt, the belt. Yep. Loosen a little bit. Okay. Okay. Perfecto. Wait. Lo lañaste. Lo lañaste ahí. You heard him? You don't want it. You don't want it. What are they doing in there, George? Loosening his cup? That's right. Sometimes you put on the same uh, <laughs> uh, cup that you fought in before, and that thing is tight around your stomach when you come in a little heavy. Round two begins. I would like to ask uh, Harold Letterman, can they do that? What are you going to do if the guy's untying the cup and he's loosening it up? I mean, the referee can tell him, hurry it up, hurry it up. But there's you can't really force him to come out of the corner. I see. You can penalize him, though, if he's laid out of the corner for no appropriate reason. So 
only he was only in the corner a few seconds, uh, you know, after the bell rang. So yeah, I think there was no real delay. Is the bottom line. Witherspoon trying to get his jab going here early in the second round. Gonzalez smiling at him once again. Witherspoon told us yesterday he doesn't like it to the body, and I'm going to get to the body. So far, he hasn't been able to do that. There's, al there's already a, a bit of a welt underneath the right eye of Gonzalez. Now, Witherspoon hasn't established any kind of strategies. Should have been getting low, trying to find his watch out, watch head, out, putting his head on uh, the chest of Gonzalez to establish, hey, I'm going to fight you inside. And right now, staying outside, roundhousing to the side. Now he backs up, Gonzalez up and fires an overhand right. Gonzalez has been down only against both. Gonzalez is doing an excellent job of keeping the fight in the middle of the ring where he has at least three feet a division from uh, himself and Witherspoon. If he can keep that distance and stay in the middle of the ring, this all the good things, nothing but good things can happen for him. What about holding his left hand low and inviting the right hand just as he did against Bo? Well, you can do that with a shorter opponent if you keep at least two feet away from him, but as he closes in on you, he's not basketball player like Riddick Bo. That time Witherspoon was able to land with a chopping overhand right, punctuated that exchange. Witherspoon more comfortable here in round two than was the case in round one, and Gonzalez, just a little bit tighter, doesn't have as much energy with the jab. No doubt about it, Gonzalez is carrying the extra weight. Back, it's going to have back. a great effect on him as the fight grows. And George, he does keep his hands so low. He was able to get away with it as an amateur against talented but, but not very big men. I don't know if he can do that against a real professional fighter. Well, if he keeps his distance, remember, if a shorter guy is far away, he's got a long way to get close to you, plus he's got to go up. With Riddick Bowe, Riddick Bowe was equally as tall as he and probably had even a greater height uh, reach advantage. Now Witherspoon has begun to find the occasional opportunity to go to the body. He landed a left hook to the rib cage just a few seconds ago. below his left pinky, appropriately called the boxer's bone, yeah, little fast, little in his fast. fight with Cole, and he had that hand in a cast until April 1st. I don't see that it's had any effect on him so far. When you've had as many amateur boxing matches as Gonzalez, you know how to stand out there and box. That's the one thing, if nothing else, they teach you in the Olympics. Build up points. Keep your opponent off balance. That's what Gonzalez has been able to do tonight. Keep in mind that Gonzalez beat both Bo right, and Lewis as an amateur. Although despite the fact that he beat, that he won eight world amateur championships, he was not well liked in Cuba because he defeated the great Teofilo Stevenson out, in three watch of his out. four fights. He also beat Felix Savon, the uh, inheritor to Stevenson's mantle as the number one heavyweight in Cuba, and he claims Castro didn't like him for beating Stevenson and Savon. And liked him less for defecting from the Cuban boxing team in Finland five years ago. Now, Witherspoon's strategy should be as soon as his back touched that rope, Throw that overhand right then. He got he has nowhere to go but to bump into that overhand right. Gonzalez moments ago was absorbing punishment to the body from Witherspoon and 
redirecting cameramen along the apron at the same time. There's a hard right hand to the body by Gonzalez. He's shown more variety in his attack here already in two rounds than he was able to show against Riddick Bowe last summer. This corner should tell Witherspoon, as soon as his back touched that rope, throw your overhand right. But if it's in the middle of the ring, he got room to back away. of what is evolving into a technical battle between Tim Witherspoon and the white trunks with black trim and Jorge Luis Gonzalez in the green with black. Seems so that Witherspoon's strategy of getting a little closer is starting to, starting to develop Bring right now. Getting closer and closer. Hard left hand inside by Witherspoon as Gonzalez was stepping away. Witherspoon with a little bit of a crab-like defense. Tough to penetrate at times. See how Gonzalez's patience holds up. And Witherspoon once again lands a left inside. And down goes Jorge Luis. Whoa. Overhand right Whoa. by Witherspoon. Six. And this is only the second fight of his career in which okay. Gonzalez has tasted canvas. Come forward. Come forward. And Gonzalez was hurt by that right hand. And Witherspoon tries to come back with the safe punch the round comes to a close. See what punch did it. It was that left hand hurt him, and followed by a right high on the head. The bigger they are, the harder they hit, the harder they fall. Didn't look like all that damaging a shot, but he caught him right on the temple, and that's one of those spots, isn't it, George? Yeah, yeah. What, what a, this is a big, tall guy yeah. like that okay, doing go, low get enough to get over our overhand right to be able to land. It just doesn't make sense. Someone should consciously keep him away of his height advantage, tell him to stay up high. If he gets a real boxing trainer, maybe he'll have that advantage, George. It's too yeah. late, Jim. Too late. He believes he's, a, he's an arrogant guy. You want arrogance in, a, in an athlete, but he is so arrogant that he hasn't taken advice from anyone since somebody told him to defect from Cuba. So the learning curve for <laughs> Gonzalez is there is no learning curve. Really? This is the same guy we saw in his first two or three fights in America. All he has to do, even right now, is keep his height advantage. He doesn't have to do anything defensive, keep his height up, push this guy away, stay in the middle of the ring, and he will not get dropped again. Let's see how Harold Letterman has it scored through the first three. Harold? Jim, 29-27, two rounds to one, Tim with a spoon. I gave the first round to Jorge Luis Gonzalez based on that jib, but certainly rounds two and three to Tim with a spoon. He waited in touch and belted him around. I've given all three rounds to Witherspoon. And Terrible Tim landed another hard right hand in that exchange, momentarily wobbling Gonzalez, and Gonzalez has become, in this round, a defensive fighter. The thing about throwing a lot of overhand right, you get tired. The bigger you are, the tighter you get. So you think Witherspoon won't be able to keep that particular attack up for long? He's going to have to sneak in some left hooks also just to kind of readjust his body. You don't get one, one, one side of your body to get tired. There's a left hook. There's a left hook. And another overhand right. He's finding it easier and easier to land as time goes by. The closer he gets, the easier it is to land those overhand right. Tell me, George, can a professional go back to being an amateur and go back into the Olympics again? <laughs> Regain some eligibility, huh? Right. <laughs> he's proving his amateur credentials here tonight. Well, we got to remember, he's in the ring with a two-time heavyweight champion. 
he's holding his own. The only thing he's doing wrong is the other tactics. He's not sticking to it. The, the kind of fight he needs to be fighting. Witherspoon won two separate titles at a time when most people thought he wasn't fulfilling his potential. Gonzalez just doesn't have a strategy. No, and, uh, and though you suggested in the first couple rounds that Witherspoon wasn't clear on his own strategy at that time, now Tim knows what he's doing in there. He knows exactly what he's doing and things are going right for him. Another overhand right, another left hook. Those two punches are going to land for a while here unless Gonzalez can take some other tack with his own fight strategy. It's kind of hard when you're overweight like that to get off those green ropes and fight. Want to remind you to join us May 20 for the premiere of Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel, featured in this particular edition, the first one-on-one -on -one interview with controversial former Nebraska running back Lawrence Phillips, a look back at last year's tragic ring death for boxer Jimmy Garcia, and a report on the auto racing war between the Indianapolis 500 and its championship auto racing team's rivals. Real Sports, the only show of its kind, only on HBO. Now you got our thinking, Tim. Just my thinking. Yeah, go to the body and set it up from the body. They understood. They understood. They understood. They understood. Tim Witherspoon is like an old blues musician who's gradually found his rhythm and his chops as this fight has gone on. And as Gonzalez has tired in front of him, it's gotten easier and easier. Now Gonzalez goes back to pumping the jab, which is what gave him success in the first round and a half. Gonzalez has to get his rest in the middle of the ring. Can't go back to the rope and lay down rest. And it's easy to do that. Just go out there and hold your opponent. Tim Witherspoon told us yesterday that he lost several days of training because of lower back problems created when his special orthotic shoe inserts wore down and failed to give him the proper support. So now Gonzalez's corner has been telling Jorge Luis, hey, this guy missed 10 days of training. You ought to be able to wear him out. Stop fighting, stop fighting. I wonder how many days of training Gonzalez missed. He might have been depressed by hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> and a referee, he shouldn't break until a referee tells him, step back and break. That's the way you get your energy level back up. Gonzalez trying a long uppercut. And Witherspoon just misses with a close-in right uppercut that could have done a lot of damage if he'd had it on target. Now here comes the, the overhand, overhand right. right. Yep. You can't miss. His back is on the rope. Throw it. It's going to hit something. You can always get some kind of pay dirt. Almost as though Tim Witherspoon's listening to you in there, George right. Foreman, when he gets Gonzalez against the ropes. He throws left hook, overhand right. And Gonzalez got so much potential. He's got so much ability. Just wonder why in the world won't you just stand out there and box? Another hard overhand right by Witherspoon. He has got that thing mercilessly on target. Left hook lands again, too. I wonder how many overhand rights Gonzalez will want to take. Witherspoon may not have the power of a Riddick bow. But he has this thing dialed in. Remember, Jim, when he told us how he loved to chop wood? 
love to hear the chopping of the wood, love to see the wood splinters fly. He was chopping wood there in the corner. That was old-fashioned stuff, George. And Jorge Luis Gonzalez absorbs the second knockout loss of his career. And you suspect that barring some dramatic change in his life, we're not going to see him at this level of the heavyweight division again. It's, it's pitiful, too, because it's all because of a lack of proper strategy. This guy has a lot of ability, a lot of strength, took some good punish, punches, stood on his feet. Well, let's watch the finishing sequence here, George, and you'll see Witherspoon landing a withering series of overhand rights and left hooks. All the same punches over and over. This guy, Gonzalez, cannot get out of the way of something as redundant as the same punch. Look at where his left hand is. Got his left hand down below his waist, even in an infighting situation where he ought to be trying to protect himself. Even up top, if you just put your hands up, you just make him hit your punches, your gloves. Believe me, this guy, Gonzalez, just needs a trainer. Well, same punch over and over. Probably too late to get it now, and he provided Tim Witherspoon with a relatively easy fight tonight. Never too late. Never too late. Witherspoon wins for the 45th time in his career. And now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes 54 seconds of round number 5. The winner by knockout victory, showing he is still one of the most dangerous heavyweights in the division. He is terrible. Tim Once again, a look at Tim Witherspoon's final destruction of Jorge Luis Gonzalez as the clock was ticking in round number five. Gonzalez unable to defend himself at the end against the constant barrage of left hooks and overhand rights from the inside. And now an overhand view and another look at how defenseless Gonzalez was with his left hand drooping down below his waist. And let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring with the winner, Tim Witherspoon. Larry? Tim, congratulations. With your overhand right, it looked like he was a setup for you because he holds his hands low. Were you just waiting for those punches to fall in? Yeah, well, I do well against uh, tall opponents, like I said before. Um, I train real hard. You know, um, I just thank God, man. I feel good. There was a time when you couldn't stand prosperity, when you would find a way somehow to screw it up. What's happened and how do you feel about that now? Yeah, I've been feeling kind of rusty like that now and then until I'm sure of myself. You know, and I'm, I'm gradually trying to get confidence and more confidence that I'm gonna do the right thing. Um, I'm not gonna mess it up anymore. We got our, our, our original Raiders of boxing back and um, I can't do no wrong with these guys behind me. What should be next for you? Oh, Reddick Bo. I like Big Daddy, me and him being him cool. But um, I think that I deserve a shot at Reddick Bo. I think he's better than all the heavyweights, including Tyson, all of them. I think that Reddick Bo is the one to beat, not Mike Tyson. Thank you very much, Tim. Again, congratulations, thank you very much. Jim and George. All right, thank you, Larry. Quick look at final punch stat numbers from Witherspoon Gonzalez. Of Witherspoon's 88 landed punches, the overwhelming majority were power punches, the left hook, the overhand right doing the damage. On the other hand, Gonzalez landed 78 punches and the overwhelming majority.